guys, it's Jessie V. So yes, I am back. I have returned. I unfortunately couldn't film for a week because I was sick. Surprise! I'm sure you guys aren't shocked about that by now. I can't really control when I get sick. I have Lyme disease, so every once in a while it'll just creep up on me and I'll be in bed for like a week and it sucks. So whenever you guys see that I'm not posting, um... That's why. But I'm really excited because I am going to be doing a conspiracy theory week, which means that for seven days, all of my videos are going to be conspiracies. And I know that's kind of weird for my channel. And no, I'm not trying to be Shane Dawson, even though if I could, I probably would be. But no, everybody knows he's like the king of conspiracies, so I'm not trying to like overshadow him or anything. But I can say I have done thorough research on these topics and I have found some really interesting ones for you guys. Because as you can imagine, when you're sick for a week, all you can really do is lie in bed. I had my laptop and for some reason I wanted to search up conspiracies and then I went down that hole and I kept researching and researching and getting more freaked out and I was like, oh, I literally have to make videos on this stuff. It's way too interesting not to share. So, with that being said, get ready for Conspiracy Theory Week. Today, we're doing Harry Potter conspiracies because I, myself, love that series, and I know you guys do too, and some of these will just blow your mind. So just sit down and get ready for your mind to just like, Pop right off. Not literally though, because I would get in trouble for that probably. I don't think your parents would be happy if they walked in their bedroom and they saw your head on. That's gross, I'm sorry. I want to just remind everybody that these conspiracy theories are fan theories. They are not my theories, so don't get mad at me if you don't like them because I didn't make them up. These were made up by other people. I am just the reporter, okay? I'm the messenger. Never be mad at the messenger. I know when I made a conspiracy theory video probably about a year ago, people were like, how can you say that? How could you say that's what's happening? And people don't understand that I'm just reporting on the subject matter. I didn't make this stuff up. And even my sister Mandy, she made a conspiracy theory video a couple months ago and everyone was like, no, that's not true. What you're saying is not true. And that's why it's called a theory, guys. It's just a theory. It's, it's not like a proven fact. I just feel like a disclaimer is necessary because I know a lot of people love Harry Potter. They are Harry Potter nerds. They will do anything for the Potter. And you know, I would too. I totally understand. So if this offends you, then I don't know. Forgive me? So I believe we have nine conspiracies right here to talk about on my handy dandy laptop because I cannot memorize everything. I'm sorry, I'm only human. So let's start with the first conspiracy which I had actually heard about before I researched it. And that is everything in the books and the movies were just figments of Harry Potter's imagination. So none of it actually happened. It was all in his head. And people have been asking JK Rawlings if this theory is true and she has not made any comment on it. She has not denied it. Basically, the theory goes that Harry never left his cupboard under the stairs, so he imagined himself in this magical world to kind of escape the reality of the abuse he was getting, and that is why everyone else in the books and the movies suffered magical injuries, and Harry Potter always had normal ones like broken bones, cracked skulls, stuff like that. Now, this is a very dark theory, and I mean, I guess it could make sense, but I am a believer that Harry Potter actually escaped escaped the cupboard and went to Hogwarts. That's just my opinion. I don't want to think that he's like stuck under the stairs still. That's depressing and not something I want my mind to be focusing on. The next theory is that there was actually this huge war between muggles and wizards a long time ago and the muggles won. And the theory poses this question. Do you ever wonder why the wizards live in hiding when they're the ones with all the power? And apparently it's because the muggles won against the wizard because they had so many more of them. Because there's obviously more people than there are wizards and now they secretly control the wizarding world that's that's the theory apparently muggles heard the words Avada Kedavra so often during the war that the phrase survives in our culture hundreds of years later as abracadabra so that's why when you see a magician he's always saying abracadabra it's because the muggles heard the wizards constantly say Avada Kedavra and it kind of like mixed up the words you know what I mean I think this theory is a bit of a stretch personally 
But I don't know, this one's all over the internet and people actually seem to believe it. The next theory is that Harry is immortal, which actually sounds more true than you think. And this brings us back to the prophecy which says, either must die at the hand of the other, for neither can live while the other survives. In other words, Harry must kill Voldemort or Voldemort must kill Harry. Which would mean that whoever is left cannot die because they can only die at the hand of the other. You know what I mean? Which means that if Voldemort is not around anymore to kill Harry, he lives forever. But the unfortunate part of this whole thing is that by not being able to die, Harry will never be able to be it was blah. Was that even correct grammar? Harry can never be reunited with his parents or his loved ones because he'll always be living and they're dead. You know what I mean? You know how like when they all die, they all become like ghosties and like hang out together. So yeah, that can't happen for Harry, which is also a really dark theory. I don't know if I believe this one. It seems more accurate than the other ones so far, but I'll leave that up to you guys to decide. Now this next theory is probably going to blow your minds a bit and also make you think like, what? What? Basically, it's that Ron is a time tab 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 That's the theory. I can't speak today, guys. Ron is a time traveling Dumbledore. <laughs> Yabba dabba do. This one is a bit out there, but online people are talking about the similarities between Ron and Dumbledore. So the red hair, the long nose, the love for candy. At one point in time, they both injured their left leg. Ron, when he's attacked by Sirius Black in his dog form in the Prisoner of Azkaban. And Dumbledore has a scar on his left knee that looks like the London Underground. So apparently Ron got this scar when he was young, then grew up to be Dumbledore, and he still has that scar on his leg sort of thing. Bear with me, let me continue. So this theory focuses on the chess scene in Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Ron chooses to play both a king and a knight, and this relates to the greater war at hand with Ron being the knight or loyal friend to Harry, and Dumbledore being the king or controller of the whole situation. So we're all aware that Dumbledore is experienced in time travel, because as you guys remember, he gave Hermione that time turner, which is so, so cool. I probably would be way too nervous to actually use it. But Ron is Harry's best friend, hence why Dumbledore has such a strong relationship with Harry and wants to protect him. And how else would he always know where Harry is and what he is doing? So I don't know if I believe this one. I mean, it's really, really out there. It'd be cool if it was true, but I like to think that Ron and Dumbledore are completely different people. Now, this one I really, really believe, and I think you guys will too. Harry being a horcrux made the Dursleys hate him. So considering what we saw in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows when somebody was near or a horcrux, it makes a lot of sense to this theory. Because Ron wore that cursed necklace for only a couple of weeks before it started turning his personality to be, you know, not so nice. He was irritable, he started fighting with his friends, it was just not like him. So imagine what it would be like having a huge horcrux living in your house for 11 years straight. But then there's kind of a loophole to this theory because it's saying, why wouldn't Hermione and Ron be affected by Harry being a horcrux? Because they're always nice to him. So it's weird how it would just affect the Dursleys and not his friends. You know, maybe they just hated him for no other reason than being just bad people, not so nice people. But we do know that Horcruxes, they just, they don't make, it's not good for people, you know? It makes you grumpy. Nobody wants to be grumpy. All right, so the next theory, I'm gonna read it right off my computer because it's kind of long. It says, Voldemort, Snape, and Harry Potter are the three Peveril brothers, and Dumbledore is death. I don't know if I'm saying Peveril right, Peveril brothers. I don't remember how it's pronounced and I'm kind of embarrassed because all you guys are Harry Potter fans and you're probably listening to me like, um, you're not pronouncing that right, so. Anyways though, in the wizard fairy tale of the three brothers, death gives a gift to each of them. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with this story. The first brother lusts after power and death gives him the all-powerful elder wand. And this is supposedly Voldemort because Voldemort is constantly lusting for power. The second the second brother wants the woman he loved to return from the dead and death gives him the resurrection stone. So Snape, because Snape loved Harry Potter's mom, she unfortunately died and he'd probably do anything to have her like come back from the dead. And the third brother just wants to escape death and was given a magical cloak, which is Harry, because obviously Harry doesn't want to die by the hands of Voldemort, so that kind of makes sense. And then death is Dumbledore, because in the story death had all three items and Dumbledore was at one point 
point in possession of all these three items. And when the third brother finally dies, who is supposedly Harry Potter, he greets death as an old friend. And if you guys remember when Harry Potter was killed by Voldemort, he meets Dumbledore, who is his old friend, at King's Cross Station. So this theory does actually make a lot of sense. As usual, we don't know if it's true or not, but I think it'd be cool if it was. Now this next one, this next one might actually anger some people because I know a lot of people ship Harry and Ginny, you know, they're so cute, you know, they love each other, everything else. But this theory says that Ginny dosed Harry with a love potion and that's why he loves her. Now let's just listen to the explanation first and then you guys could decide what you think. Ever notice how Harry just sort of spontaneously has the hots for Ginny Weasley all of a sudden? It comes on pretty quick during the Half-Blood Prince, which I actually did notice because in the previous movies, Harry and Ginny never really like made eye contact. They never really spoke that much. They weren't really like in the same vicinity. There was no reason for us viewers to believe they were gonna end up together. And then all of a sudden in one movie, they kind of liked each other. So it was just really random. So you'd figure that there would have been some sort of lead up, you know what I mean? Because yeah, it was pretty obvious that Ginny had a thing for Harry, but the feelings weren't reciprocated for the longest time. Then all of a sudden Harry fell for her and they get married and have kids. So let's just talk about what a love potion does, okay? A love potion makes a target lust for the desired subject. So given the sudden love in, there's a good possibility that Ginny used the potion to make Harry fall for her without Harry's consent. And what's weird is that even Ginny's mom admitted to using a love potion when she was in school. So maybe because she heard that her mom used it, she was more inspired to use it as well because we all know we kind of look up to our parents a little bit, so that could make sense. And combined with the fact that Fred and George Weasley sell these potions, the abuse of the concoctions would seem to run in the family. So that family's kind of always up to no good. You know, the twin brothers love them, but always up to no good. So they could have had some influence on their sister, who knows. The theory is that after years of pining for Harry, having a huge crush on him, and when it wasn't reciprocated, Ginny gave in to her dark side and maybe spiked his butterbeer a little bit. And it was probably just a few drops, you know, but the potion works really well after a few drops, that's for sure. It was enough to just keep him jealous and anxious and, you know, to like her as well, but not too much to make it suspicious, you know what I mean? Because when people put too much love potion in something, that person's like way goo goo gaga, almost zombie-like, and she didn't want Harry to be that, like, emotional about her because then people would notice. Anyways, I don't want that one to be true because I just like the fact that Ginny and Harry started liking each other, they fell in love, so I hope it was just all natural. Oh, natural. Okay, this next theory is that Mary Poppins lives in the same universe as Harry Potter. It's just that they weren't around at the same time. So Mary Poppins was a lot earlier than Harry Potter and his friends. It says Mary Poppins was around years before Harry was, but so was Hogwarts. Somewhere in the early 1900s before Harry was even born. We noticed that Mary Poppins uses magic throughout the movie, seeming to have mastered levitation spells and several others. And then she keeps telling the kids that what happened didn't really happen to most likely keep herself from getting in any more trouble with the Ministry of Magic. And what's weird is that she uses magic constantly in front of muggles who are non-magic folk, and yet you never see her with a wand, so you might wonder what that's about. And that is because she keeps her wand in her umbrella just like Hagrid. This is how the Ministry still hasn't been able to take her wand from her. You can also notice that her bag is a lot like Hermione's in the last book, and Dick Van Dyke's character is most likely also a wizard, and that's how he's able to see and understand Mary's magic. So people are saying that Mary Poppins was most likely a student at Hogwarts and would probably have been in the Hufflepuff house because of her hardworking and caring nature. So I find that to be very interesting, but no, I do not think it's true. I think they're totally different worlds, but it is an interesting theory. All right, this next one might be the craziest one of them all, so hold on to your hats because it's about to get weird up in here. So the next one is that George Weasley is Willy Wonka. He literally is what you guys know as Willy Wonka. And this theory is a fan's way of coping and seeing how George survived the death of his twin brother. By the way, that scene in the movie, I don't even... 
I don't even really want to talk about it. The idea is that George uses a time turner and becomes Willy Wonka. He goes back in time, makes a chocolate factory in London, and basically just lives out his days there. But let's be real, Molly Weasley would probably go back in time, grab him, and bring him back because it's such a silly thing for him to do. And we also learn that you can't really go back in time that far without major consequences. After Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, we learn that the further you go back, the bigger mess you can make. And usually with time turners they only go back a few hours so this theory wouldn't really make sense. But yeah, that is all of the Harry Potter fan theories that I'm going to tell you guys today. Let me know down in the comments which ones you think could be true and which ones you think are utterly ridiculous, which is probably most of them. But I still thought it would be interesting for me to tell you guys about all of these. Don't forget, this week is Conspiracy Theory Week so for the next seven days I'm going to be posting videos that are conspiracies about sort of your favorite shows, movies, just stuff that will utterly shock you. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Sorry for being gone for so long. I love you guys so, so much, and I hope you have an awesome rest of your day. Until next time, bye!